Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Great Attractor. Now what exactly is it? You're going to find out in this video as we talk more about it using Space Engine and Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What The Math. So the reality is that and as we escape planet Earth and our galaxy, I have to admit that we actually have no idea what the Great Attractor is. But I'm still going to kind of try to help you visualize what we know about it and help you understand what we really don't know about it. Now, first of all, let's actually, for a second, go back to our planet Earth. And from this angle, I just wanted to show you what uh, we see in the night sky. So this is the Milky Way. And somewhere inside the Milky Way, as a matter of fact, somewhere behind the Milky Way, there are quite a lot of mysteries because we can't really see uh, what's behind it due to a lot of the dust and a lot of the stars that are in the way. We can still see in infrared, but not very well. And behind all of this lies the unusual um, thing known as the Great Attractor. Here's actually the map of all of this. Um, a little bit more scientific map that shows you various clusters of galaxies and right in the middle, right in the center, that's where the Great Attractor is. Now, as you can possibly imagine from the name, the Great Attractor is something that attracts. Anyway, let's return back to our solar system and I'm going to give you an idea of the proportions and sizes we're, we're talking about here. So today we're actually going to go beyond our solar system and we're even going to go beyond the galaxy. So if this is our sun right here, we're going to go way, way, way out into essentially the outside of our galaxy, the Milky Way. So uh, we're actually going to be looking at tremendously large distances and tremendously large um, amounts of space. And here it's going to be very difficult even to see our own galaxy. And the idea here is that somewhere out there, specifically somewhere at a distance of something around uh, 150 to about 180, maybe even 250 million light years away from our galaxy, which is actually quite, quite far away. Um, just to give you a comparison, the closest large galaxy to us, which is the Andromeda galaxy, I'm going to place it right now, uh, the Andromeda Galaxy is at a distance of about 2.5 million um, light years. So if I were to take Andromeda, it's somewhere around here-ish. So there it is. That would be the 2.5 million light year away distance. The, um, the great attractor, the unusual phenomenon we're talking about is at a distance of about hundred times more. So imagine this times a hundred. So it's somewhere, somewhere, somewhere over there. And because of the distance and because of the location behind the Milky Way, we basically have no idea what it is. We just know that everything around us, specifically all of the other galactic clusters, including our own Milky Way, seem to be attracted toward it. We seem to be moving toward it. And as a matter of fact, the new definition of the so-called supercluster where we are located, known as Lenia Kea, uh, I actually made a video about this uh, a few months ago and you can check it out on this channel. The Lenia Kea cluster is actually formed um, around the Great Attractor. So if I were to place, let's just use a black hole or something, if I were to place a tremendously large black hole somewhere right around here, and if I were to call it the Great Attractor, then this would be the center of Lenyake, and the other clusters and the other galaxies, and as a matter of fact, uh, millions and millions of them would be located all around it. So this is how we, today we define the Lenyake uh, cluster. And this Great Attractor is basically this one unusual thing, this object or possibly area that has a tremendous amount of mass and it attracts everything toward it. So at some point we're actually going to end up there and possibly uh, this either might cause some sort of a restructure of our galactic cluster or might even end up 
um, having us collide with some kind of a supermassive black hole, for all we know. Because we don't really know what's inside. But let's actually, let's talk about the masses involved here. And we're actually going to first place it at a distance of um, about 250 uh, million light years away from us. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, turn it into dark matter. We're going to just take... Uh, we'll remove all of this extra stuff that we don't need and take one of these um, dark matter particles and just change it into the mass that would represent this so-called um, great attractor. So how massive is it? Well, this unusual anomaly is something like 100,000 times the mass of the Milky Way, which is actually ridiculously massive. Um, our Milky Way is about 1 trillion masses of Sun, and so this... This right here would be 100 times that. So you can imagine it's a lot, a lot of masses of sun. It's about 6 times 10 uh, to the power of 16. Uh, just in comparison, let's, let's see how, if this was a black hole, let's see how big our sun would be next to it. You can barely even see it. I, can't, I don't think you can even see it. Let's actually compare this to the some of the largest stars we have. Like, for example, U.S. Kitai. And even that is invisible in comparison to the size of this humongous object, because it's actually light years across. So uh, this is like galactic sizes, and it might be uh, so large that basically its gravitational power reaches uh, hundreds of light, uh, hundreds of millions of light years across, uh, attracting everything in the vicinity. And most galaxies and most clusters move toward this object at the speed of about 700 kilometers per second and constantly accelerate as well. But this is actually not the biggest anomaly in space, and this is not the biggest such object, because there's quite a lot of other ones, including something known as the Shapely Attractor, which is even bigger. But we'll talk about this in one of the future videos. But here, if I were to even compare this to a galaxy, you can see this is a galactic size object, at least in terms of mass. If this was a black hole, it would be tremendously, tremendously large. But actually, just for fun, let's, uh, let's see if we can maybe uh, see what's happening to our own galaxy right now. So it's slowly moving toward this location. But what I want to do is I want to place this right next to our galaxy and see what would happen to both our galaxy and our solar system if it was actually close to it. If it wasn't at a distance of 250 million, but it was actually at a distance of, I don't know, like a few uh, thousand light years. So we're going to move this right here. We're actually going to slow down time as well and just see what sort of effects it has on our beautiful uh, galaxy. So there it is. We're going to place it maybe a little bit closer just for fun. There it is. We're going to place it right there. So there, basically imagine this is uh, the future and we're finally approached the Great Attractor, even though we don't really know what it is. We're going to see what's going to happen to um, all everything. Let's see what happens to Sagittarius A, let's see what happens to our beautiful Earth and the Sun, which are going to be located somewhere right here. I'm going to actually remove this old Sun and add a new one. Although the reality is, of course, that by the time we get to the Great Attractor, our Sun is going to be a white dwarf, or possibly even a black dwarf, and uh, will very, very likely have swallowed Earth, or Earth might actually have been dislodged by something else. This is also going to be way, way after we collide with the Andromeda Galaxy, so in that sense, um, everything here is going to be very, very different. Anyway, so, here we go, and action. And just accelerating time here just a little bit, and we're going to see what's going to happen to all of the system. And you can see it starts accelerating dramatically toward the Great Attractor, and even though um, we're running the simulation at something like 100 years per second, you're going to start seeing how fast things will ap start approaching this tremendously large object as it essentially is going to uh, suck everything in. And very likely there will be nothing, absolutely nothing left. But that's just a speculation, so let's just watch this as it happens in accelerated time, like 1000 years per second. Things are not happening fast enough, so we might have to accelerate this a little bit more. So at a speed of, or I guess at a time acceleration of 2000 years per second, you kind of start noticing how uh, parts of the Milky Way starts getting stretched and 
slowly collide with the, the tremendously large black hole that's right there. But don't get confused though, because we don't really know if this is a black hole. We don't even know if this is an object at all. It might be a collection of galaxies that we just don't see. Or, as some uh, scientists speculate, it might be uh, a very, very large collection of dark matter that's essentially spread across a large area and is creating this very unusual effect. So this is probably not a black hole, but you never know. Anyway, our Earth and our Sun have actually, for some reason, escaped the system. I think it was a mistake with the orbit I chose. But uh, the Sun is now moving at a tremendously large speed toward the Great Attractor. It's like, we're talking about relativistic speeds here. At this point, we're going to be moving at a speed of light relatively soon. But the entire galaxy is basically being kind of sucked in, but also then pulled out on the other side of this unusual object. And that's because I made this into dark matter, so it doesn't actually absorb anything. And because it doesn't absorb anything, it's just going to shred the galaxy apart and let it out on the other side. Now, so that's essentially what might happen to our galaxy, the Milky Way, when it gets to this part. It might just get reshredded and recombined. And unfortunately, our Sun and our Earth are gone. Not sure how that happens. So let's accelerate time a little bit more, see what comes out of all of this after some time. And basically, as you can see, the galaxy has been kind of unofficially destroyed. And so that's really all we know, or actually really mostly don't know about the Great Attractor. We know it's there, we know things move toward it, and we know it's very, very massive. But other than that, I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something from it. And maybe in the future we'll discover more things about the Great Attractor and be able to explain it a little bit better. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.